everyone, welcome back. My name is Anna and this is the Brook Willow Knit channel. Um, I have a ton of things to show you today, so I thought it'd be fun to do a sit down classic podcast style vodcast, whatever you want to call it, and we can just kind of work through everything because, yeah, I'm pretty excited about what I have to show you. So starting out, um, what am I wearing? This is the carpet coat from Kate Facet, and it's in the Glorious Knits book that I believe was put out in like 1989. Um, I was able to get it from thriftbooks.com, I believe, for like five bucks, and I've got to say it's a treasure chest full of so many great patterns and color work and all of that. Um, I'll get up and show you the back side because that's where most of the pattern is in. But yes, I love this thing. I've got to say um, I don't really wear it out much because it's really big and heavy, but I have been getting a ton of use out of it from just at home, especially in the mornings when it's a bit chilly. Like this morning, it was 48 degrees outside and my house is 60 degrees because I left all the windows open and I just love that temperature. And I was able to just wrap myself up in this and I haven't taken it off yet. I also am wearing some hand knit socks. I won't show you because they're on my feet, but they are the Curio Socks by Andrea Mowry, and they are also keeping me cozy and warm today. Um, yeah, so I just want to jump right into my finished objects because I have three that I finished this week, which is a very big deal because I don't really finish that many in one week. And I think that's because I haven't really been knitting monogamously so I've been doing a little bit on each project and they all just happen to finish up within the same week so let's jump right into it uh, the first one I'm going to show you here is my first ranunculus um, by Midori Heroes it's just called the ranunculus but it's my first one we all know this um, I, you, I made this using knitting for olives silk mohair in the color rust and I used just one strand of it and I intentionally wanted this to be a very airy piece and I believe I was able to achieve that. I'm gonna get up and show you a closer look. You can see a little bit of the lace detail in it right here. It's not as obvious because of the yarn that I chose, but I like the way that it looks. And here's the bottom of it too. I made it a bit more cropped than what the pattern called for. I like my sweaters to be just below my jean line so I can do a little French tuck and I tend to wear high-waisted jeans, so that means I need a slightly shorter sweater. Um, and I also intentionally wanted the sleeves to have a little bell shape to it, so I just knit the whole sleeve. I didn't do any decreasing or anything. I bound off at the end, and it was able to create that shape that I wanted. It kind of gives me like a slight 70s vibe with that little bell shape. A few people ask how I plan on wearing this and I do intend to wear it solely as a layering piece with maybe a black turtleneck underneath or a black tank top. If you go on my Instagram you see a picture of me wearing it. I think I wore a rust colored tank top underneath if I remember correctly and so that way my skin kind of showed off the lace work through it. I also love how light and airy this is. I feel like I can throw it up and it's like comes down like a feather. Maybe a little bit faster than a feather, but it's just like so slinky and airy and weighs nothing and I think that's really fun. 
I know that there's a lot of opinions about the ranunculus out there, whether they're in love with it and they've made five or more of them, or if they don't understand the hype. I think I'm about middle of the road between those two. Um, I didn't understand the hype, so it took me this long to finally make one. I do, I did like it. it the lace work was pretty fun. Um, nothing crazy, but I did get a little bored once I got to the body, but that's kind of the case with like any yoke type sweater anyways. Um, I don't plan on making a ton of these. Maybe if I made another one, it'd be for like a gift knit. I would probably make it in more of like um, a thicker solid yarn that wasn't mohair and that way you can see the lace work and the yoke a bit more. I think that would be kind of fun. So maybe I'll do it again as a gift. But yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. I love the color and I'm excited to wear it this fall once it gets a little bit cooler out. My next finished object is the Colorfield Hand Towel from Pearl Soho. This is a free pattern on their website. I've spoken about it a lot. And I used Lion Brand's Pima Cotton. Now, I did actually end up cheating on this pattern a little bit, and I cut it quite a bit short. So when I originally was knitting it, I was intending for it to be this way with the stripe on the bottom instead of the side. But look how wide this is. That's a bit, that's like a California king of hand towels and it takes two folds. So you have to fold it like in fourths to get it to the size you would need to go over a towel ring. Um, I don't need a towel that big. And also to be honest, I was kind of ready to be done with it. I cast this on when I first bought my house, so that was like first week of June, so I've been working on this for just over three months now, so you could probably understand why I was ready to just cast it off. And the other night as I was working on it, I realized like, oh wow, okay, I spilled some water and I used this to wipe it off, so that's why there's that little mark on it, so please ignore that. But yeah, I was knitting it and I realized well, actually, it's this exact size I want it to be, um, folding into thirds, and it's the right length that I want it to be as well. I liked the look of the vertical stripe on the side, too. It gives it a little bit different of a look, so I cast it off, and I am very happy with how it works. I will get up and show you a bit closer. I'm sure you've heard about this towel before, especially if you watch Knitting Traditions, because Inga was also making this hand towel. It takes a very long time, so if you want to make this, you have been warned. <laughs> um, linen Stitch is a very condensed stitch. It's lovely because there's no holes in it, so um, it's a very solid piece of fabric, and I believe it'll absorb water very well. Um, but it's similar to half fisherman's rib or fisherman's rib where it just scrunches all the stitches down So you have to like knit twice as much to create the same length of fabric if that makes sense um, But it also has a very beautiful backside to it as well for a wrong side I think that's such a cool looking stitch um, I think Inga even said that she was going to make some pillow covers using the wrong side of the linen stitch and I think that's a really cool idea and it's going to look very beautiful. I myself probably won't do that just because I need a little bit of a break from the linen stitch um, just to work on something else for a little bit. But I did get other colors in the Pima cotton for more hand towels, so I do eventually want to make more, but I'm gonna take a break right now. <laughs> um, moving right along, this next one is very exciting, especially if you've been following along for a while, um, and that is my very own design that I made. I finally finished it. I cast this on last fall, 
and I took a little break in the winter because I started making some summer knits for a trip to Florida that I was going on and then it turned into actual summer and I just wanted to make summer knits. If you hear the leaf blower in the background, I apologize. It's Labor Day weekend, so everyone is laboring in their yards. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid. <laughs> but anyways, I finished this scarf and I'm very happy with it. I'm going to scroll it on by for you to see. Doo -doo -doo. So the pattern repeats itself once it gets to the middle and then it mirrors on the other side. I think it made the perfect length for a scarf. I like to wrap my scarf once around like that. I think it's like a very chic way to wear a scarf. Um, and there's still a good amount of length in the back too, so it's not going to be falling off. There's Nothing worse than a scarf that's just a little too short. <laughs> I have a little, like, I remember that's how I made so many scarves when I first was knitting. They all just were short and wonky and didn't look good. So I made sure this one was going to be long enough. Um, as far as construction goes, I did do a moss stitch because I felt like it had the correct scale for the pattern knitted as it did in the chart that I created for it because if I did a stockinette stitch I felt like it was going to be a little bit too like distorted like that and the shaping just wouldn't have been right. So here is a close up of the moss stitch throughout the pattern. Um, one thing you may also notice is the pattern is the same on both sides. And the way I was able to achieve that was by using a Turkish cast on at the end and then it's all knit in the round. And the beautiful thing about that is since this is in Tarja, there is, or just color work in general, there are a lot of strands that would need to be um, woven in but they're all hidden inside the scarf so you don't have to weave in any of these ends which I thought was just lovely. <laughs> um, the other nice thing too is intarsia knit in the round can be a little bit scary. There's like some extra steps that you need to take if you were to do it on like a sweater but with this you use strands of yarn on this side and then when you flip it over to do the second half of the round you use those same strands of yarn um so it's kind of like a combination of stranded knitting and intarsia knitting um which makes it very easy i will say i think this is a bit easier to make than it may appear so if you are a like confident beginner knitter, I think this would be a really good project to kind of jump into intarsia. So you may be wondering when this pattern will be available. I haven't, I have the chart made because I obviously needed it to make this, but I haven't writ up, written up a formal pattern yet. I do plan on doing that maybe tomorrow and hopefully having it out by the end of the week. And I also have been thinking about um, testing this and selling this pattern. Um, first of all, I feel kind of weird having testers for this for the sole fact that it's just one size. I don't have to make it into several different sizes, so no one really needs to test um, out the different sizes to make sure that they are correct. And also, I, I made this sweater to, or sorry, I made this scarf because I wanted this scarf, and I made the pattern because I just wanted something really cool and colorful, and I did it 
with the intention to have this scarf and not really with the intention to make money off the pattern. And I just want to say this is like no shade against people who are knitwear designers and they make patterns and make money. I know that's your living and that's awesome and I fully support it because I love knitting everybody else's patterns. And I personally, my goal isn't to become a knitwear designer. That's not the path I want to take with the knitting. Um, so with all of that being said, I decided I'm going to release this as a free pattern. And that way it's accessible to everybody and I don't really have to go through the whole test knitting process or anything like that. Um, but yeah. I genuinely had fun making this pattern. I don't feel like I need to be compensated for it because I was compensated by having this lovely scarf for myself. So expect a free pattern. If you want to know more about when it comes out, just follow me on Instagram. I am likely to be active about that on there. The awesome thing about having all of these objects finished is that now I have a clean slate for fall and I can just focus on these brand new projects instead of working on these almost languaging projects as well. Um, except for one particular project, which is one that I started casting on when I was camping this last spring up on the North Shore, which is the everyday sock here, which I know they look pretty goofy when they are being worked on, but when they're on your feet, they stretch really well and shorten up and just hug around your feet. So I went to Madeline Island, which is an island off of Lake Superior in northern Wisconsin with my friends last weekend. And I brought this one with, which is really fun because my friend Tara, who was visiting, also brought the Everyday Sock as well. Uh, you may all know this is by Andrea Mari. Did I say that already? I don't know. But um, I am using the Stroll Tweed Sock Yarn from Knit Picks to make this in the color Persimmon. And I'm very happy with it. I have used this yarn before to make this exact sock for my friend. And I used the leftovers to make the Curio Sock, which I'm wearing right now. And so far the yarn has been holding up great. We've had no issues with it. Um, and yeah, I'm very happy with it. Some people have asked me what my thoughts are on the ribbing on the bottom of the foot and for me, I'm not somebody who has issues with sensitivity with my feet, um, so maybe I'm not the best person to ask because it doesn't really bother me at all. If anything, I love it because it hugs my feet so tight. I think I have more of an issue with socks that fall down the feet. Um, that really bothers me so these stay up and on my foot and I just absolutely love them so that's why I just keep making these but yeah um, I just have the one so far and then I'll have to make the other one once I bind off pretty soon here my next whip is a new cast on from this week and it is the hipster hat by Petite Knit and I haven't gotten very far just like probably the main cuff portion um, but I am loving this hat. I wanted um, an all ribbed hat. I really like the chunky 2x2 two two ribbing on this. I think it's going to make a very good classic hat and I probably will make this in many different colors this fall. Um, so couple things to mention. It took me three tries to get the 2 by 2 tubular cast on. I'm still not really happy with my result of this one. I'll give you a kind of an up close look here. I feel like it looks a little messy, like some bits like this, but honestly, like I'm just being a little hard on myself. While I'm up here though, I just want to show you this beautiful yarn. Um, so this is the Madeline Tosh by Hedgehog Fibers collab. They came out with two colorways and look at all of these colorful little tweety bits in here. They remind me of Fruity Pebbles 
and there's like 20 different colors in here. They used a bunch of their scrap um, scraps from the factory to kind of make this like recycled wool yarn, which I think is a really cool concept. Um, and it's really fun to knit this to see which colored bits are gonna come out because a lot of them are hidden within the skein. And I'm looking right now, there's even one that's like, has a little tinsel in it. I don't know if you can see that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the tinsel, but um, it's been really fun to work up this hat. And uh, this is like in a day's work, so I'm sure if I spend another day or two on it, I'll be done with it. Um, but yeah, I don't really have much to say about this one yet, um, just because I haven't gotten too far with it, but I'm really happy with it. I love this colorway so much. They call it a yellow, but to me it reads a little more of like a yellow green. Um, but I think it's going to be a fun kind of clashy color with all of my other knits, which is very intentional. Um, I've talked about this before, but I think this winter I just want like really colorful knits that don't even necessarily match with each other. I just want to be like drowning in hand knits for this season. That's definitely my vibe going into this fall and winter season. So I think this will be a nice addition for that. Um, so next up is a sweater that I also cast on this week. I've talked about making this before, um, and I'll show you what the final result will be without giving away... Ooh, I need to like figure out a way to not show the chart here. Okay, so this is the sweater that I'm making, and it is the Matawaka sweater by um, Lincoln Newman from the Wilderness Knits book. And I have some things to say about this. <laughs> uh, first of all, I will show you how far I am. Again, similar to the hat, I'm not too far um, since I just started it this week. I did have to restart this, so I started the ribbing and then I realized I had twisted the whole thing because um, I'm knitting in the round and so I had to tear it all out and start all over again, which wasn't like a huge deal. It's still annoying though. That's I think that was the first time I've ever done that. I was surprised that I wasn't paying that much attention. Um, but since I did that, I realized, okay, so my thought on this sweater, let me show you it again. Okay, looking at this sweater, I was assuming it was going to be a top-down raglan sweater, just knitting in the round. So when it called to cast on, I cast everything on, assuming it was the neck. I was using a much shorter um, cable for my needles um, because I thought it was going to be a neck. So it was all scrunched up. I couldn't really tell. And then when I had to tear it out because I had to frog it and restart it, I realized like, whoa, this is a really big neckline. Like it's going off my shoulders. Well, I realized it's actually a bottom up sweater and it doesn't necessarily say that in the pattern. Um, it could have said that in the beginning of the book, but I didn't read the beginning of the book. I just went right to the pattern. Um, so it's a bottom up sweater and I don't want to give too much of the pattern away, but upon further inspection, I realized that it requires machine knitting like using a sewing machine, which was not listed in the materials for the pattern. Again, maybe at the beginning of the book. Luckily, I have a sewing machine, but I would have been really annoyed if I didn't. And I also wouldn't expect to have to need a sewing machine to make this sweater. I'm a little annoyed by that fact, too. I kind of just wanted it to be all 
knit, even if it was knit in pieces, like I can hand seam everything together, but no, it requires a machine. Um, the construction is really goofy. Um, but again, that could just be my, obviously that's my own opinion because that I've only really done sweaters, more traditional ways of assembling them. Um, let me know if you have had to like sew a sweater together using machine and wonky different ways to assemble it and what your thoughts are on it. Um, right now I'm annoyed, but maybe like as it progresses and I do it, it won't be as like intimidating or hard as I'm thinking it is. Um, sometimes when I start a new pattern and I realize it seems like super complicated, I just get annoyed and bitter, but when I just take it step by step, it ends up being fine and that's probably how this will end up too. Um, but yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird. <laughs> Um, as a reminder too, I will show you the color palette I plan on using for this. And these are the colors that I am making the sweater out of. Um, I am using Let Lopi. It's my first time knitting with Let Lopi and so far I really like it. It's just um, single ply twisted yarn. I think it's single ply. It looks like single ply. Um, super rustic, super toothy. Um, this is gonna be so warm, I'm so excited. I'm planning on going cross country skiing in this sweater um, and using it for when it gets bitter cold here in Wisconsin. I almost said Minnesota, but same thing almost. <laughs> um, I also plan on making this sweater for when I go to Colorado in the mountains in October. However, with that being said, Colorado can be very warm um, all winter long. I used to live there and I mean there were times in December that it was 65 degrees. So I'm hoping for cold weather when I'm out there. We are going to be out in the mountains in higher elevation. So it probably will be a little bit colder than at least Denver would be. So I am planning on wearing this sweater for that. Um, also, depending on how the construction goes and how long it takes me to actually knit this, I kind of want to make a second one for my best friend um, for her birthday. Her birthday is in September. I don't think she watches it, so I'm not concerned um, about her. Well, ruining the surprise, but I think I want to do like a different style sweater from the same book, and I'll show you the one I'm thinking, but using the same colors, um, just in a different format. Um, so I was thinking of using this rust color as the main color, and then using the rest of the colors I have here as like the accent colors. Um, so with that being said, we'll have almost the same sweater but different patterns and slightly different colors. So they're like going to the same party is what I call it, but they're not the exact same sweater. So I think it'll be fun for her and I to have friendship sweaters that we'll get to wear when we go on our trip uh, to the mountains in Colorado and It'll be a great birthday present for her. Um, I know we really like to make each other things for birthdays lately. Um, she made a beautiful cross stitch for me, which I can't remember if I've shown it on here or not. I'm gonna show it to you really quick. Hold on one second. For her birthday last year, I got her um, a creepy cross stitch book because um, she wanted to get into cross stitching. And for my birthday, she made me this awesome piece from that book. So this is all cross stitch that she made. So it's a skull in like a terrarium type thing. And she found this super cool uh, frame that matches it perfectly. And I absolutely love this so much. It's so cool to me. Um, I have this whole gallery wall above my piano, and this is part of it, and I love it so much. 
So yeah, I guess we're just making each other things now and it's really cool. So my next whip is kind of an acquisition, um, but also a whip. And I'll show you what I mean. I have recently made a very large purchase that I am so freaking excited about. And that is, I finally bought a spinny wheel. Um, I have been thinking about this literally since I bought a drop spindle, or even before. I always wanted to get really into spinning, um, but I didn't want to jump right into the wheel, so I got the drop spindle. I've been working on that for a year, and that's been super fun, but as a lot of you may know, like drop spindle is just very slow going. Um, really great for traveling with. Um, I've brought it camping before and as like travel projects too or to friend's house and I really like the drop spindle for that. Um, however, I want to like really be able to make a lot of things with hand spun yarn and if I want to do that I need to be able to spin at a faster rate while still having time to actually knit things too. So that was my decision for getting a wheel. I had done a lot of research on all the different wheels that the Woolery has to offer, and I read like all the reviews on everything, and I narrowed it down to a few different ones, um, but I really wanted, this is that Ashford Kiwi 3. Um, honestly, the first thing that drove me to it was the price point. I think it's like, 500 some dollars compared to everything else is at least like a thousand dollars and the reason why it's so much less is because that you have to assemble it yourself um, which I have no problem with I build like all my furniture that I have here um, and I used to have a job where I assembled a lot of furniture too so I have experience with that that wasn't an issue at all but it was out of stock, so I did the whole like email me to notify me when it comes back in and like a week later they're like this is in stock and I wasn't planning on buying a wheel this soon but that sense of urgency definitely got me when they emailed me and I'm like well this is something I want to get by the end of the year what difference does it make if I get it now or if I get it in like December so I decided to just get it now and I'm so freaking happy that I did. Assembling it was super easy, so easy that I actually did it after my friends and I went out to get some cocktails and I came home at 2 a.m. and I put together the whole wheel. It took me until about 3.30 to do it. I don't remember the last time I've ever stayed up that late, but this had me motivated to do so. And I did it right. <laughs> um, so. The whip portion of this is the yarn that I'm spinning. So I'm going to show you one that I have in progress right now. My dear friend Tara came to visit. Uh, she moved to Washington DC and she came to visit us here and she stopped at the yarnery and picked up this, actually let me show you this first this fiber for me um it's malabrigo i don't have the label with me right now so i don't know the color but i will link it below but look how beautiful these colors are she said she thought of me when she saw this and she was right because i love these colors and i'm currently spinning it up i'll get up and show you up close okay also please don't judge me I'm a newbie spinner so if it looks bad don't yell at me <laughs> but I think I am getting a lot better already just from practice so here it is how it's spinning up um, I only really know one way to spin I think it's just like the normal way of spinning I don't really even know what it's called but um, basically my goal is to like spin it as fine or small as I possibly can without it breaking and then I apply two strands together. Um, I'm not being really strategic about how I am like breaking this up and like I'm not like spinning just the dark colors 
And then the light colors to apply that together, I'm just kind of going as is with this one. Um, really just continuing to practice, but I'm very happy with it so far. I love the colors of it. Um, but yeah, I do have some more yarn that I spun and um, it was actually some fiber that I got for free from the Woolery and that was with the purchase of the wheel. They, with some of the wheels, you get a free pound of fiber. It's just undyed. It's a blend of like a lot of different breeds, I believe. Um, but yeah, I think it was great to um, be able to practice on without having to like buy fiber first and then be nervous that you spend all this money on fiber and you're gonna mess it up. So it was really sweet of them to send a free pound. Um, so here is the first skein that I spun up. Let me show you up nice and close. It's very fluffy, um, almost a chunky weight. It's like bordering worsted. I don't know, right there it's worsted, but like up here it's like slightly more chunky. I don't know. My goal is to try to be consistent, but I do love this like cloudy texture that it has created. Um, and so I have a ton more to spin up as well, but I already know what I'm going to make with this. Um, so there is a pattern from Woolfolk yarn that I forget which yarn they use in it, but it looks like Sherpa to me. Um, you know, like the Sherpa coats and all of that. It reminds me of that and it's a sweater that looks kind of Sherpa-y. I'll insert a picture of it here. I wanted to make this last spring, but the yarn is so unique. So I wanted to get it from Woolfolk, but after I put the yarn into my cart, it was over $200. I'm like, uh, it's just really expensive right now for what I want to spend. So I kind of just moved on, but I just still think about this cardigan a lot. But then when I spun up this yarn, it reminded me of that kind of sherpa -y, very textured yarn. And it seems to be about the same weight of the yarn as well. So uh, my plan is to be able to make that cardigan out of my own hand spun. Um, and I think it'll be a nice little intro to hand spun knitting. Um, I think it's pretty low stakes too. It's just a cardigan and something easy to wear over. And I think it's gonna look really nice. But yeah, so I'm excited to do that. I did sign up for a fiber club as well. It's the same one that Andrea Maori uses. She has been spinning up so many different beautiful yarns as I'm sure you've seen. And um, I remember that she mentioned she was in a fiber club, like a monthly subscription. I almost bought a monthly subscription to the Ritual Dyes Tarot Club, but I don't know, I have a lot of yarn and I can buy yarn anytime. I feel like it's a little bit harder to find different fibers because there's just not as many like fiber ready to spin available as there obviously is yarn. Um, so I thought it'd be better to use that budget for a monthly subscription to the Hello Yarn Monthly Fiber Club. So I'm really excited. I haven't gotten my first package in yet. I think she did say it could take about two months to start receiving it. Um, because she has to make it or dye it and all that and that's fine. I'm patient. I have plenty of things to spin But yeah, I'm just really excited to start spinning. We're approaching inside season So I'm gonna have more time I believe to work on these different projects and um, More time to spin and knit. So I'm very excited. I have to say too I was very inspired to kind of get a wheel faster 
um, after watching Bella from Hundred Acre Wool, she recently acquired a wheel and she has been spinning up so many beautiful yarns and I've just been lusting after all of it. So that definitely helped fuel the fire for me to finally get a wheel. And yeah, I'm just so happy. <laughs> I have another acquisition that was a bit of an investment as well. I don't know if you noticed when I was showing off this whip here that I have some new needles. Um, okay, so I have always been a tighter knitter. I think I'm tighter than average, so like when I knit any garment I usually have to either go up a size or a needle or whatever but yeah I'm a tight knitter I have been using the leaky driftwood needle set which I absolutely love they're so beautiful um, but the last three projects I've been working on my knitting has just been way too tight on the wool and or on the needle and it's been slowing down my knitting a lot having to like kind of squeeze the yarn onto the needle itself from the cable and I've been getting pretty frustrated with that so I'm like okay it's time to get a metal needle set because I don't have that issue at all when I'm working on socks because I strictly only use like this Chaogu fix needle um, so I know I should be using metal needles but I didn't have a needle set, so I decided to finally get the Licky Copper Needle Set. Um, I forget the actual name of these needles, but I'll link it below. But here they are. I have been dreaming about these for a while. Um, it was Julia from Origin Threadcraft that kind of made me want to get these. I know she has this set. I think she might have the longer set. Um, I have the longer needles in the driftwood, so I kind of wanted to try out shorties and see how I liked those. And I do really like them. I'm not sure if they're really intended for um, big circumference knitting, especially considering it didn't even come with like a super long cable. I had to use the cable from my driftwood set onto here. Um, but I like them so far. I think um, these small needles will especially be really nice when knitting socks or sleeves, you know, smaller circumference projects. But they are just flying, like my knitting is flying off. I, can, I feel like I'm knitting twice as fast now that I'm using these metal needles. And I think they're just beautiful. I'm gonna show you them up a bit closer and get a better look at these. Um, I really think they're real copper on them. Obviously they're plated, um, but the copper is nice. It kind of reminds me of my grandma. She always wore the copper bracelets and she always said like, it's really good for you to have the copper bracelets. So I kind of feel that when I'm like, consistently working on copper needles as well. I do actually kind of want to get these now in the longer set. Um, again, for big circumference knitting, my hands are cramping up a little bit because I'm like, have to be more delicate with like the smaller needles or it's just something I have to get used to, but it would be nice to have the longer set. I have to wait a little bit though because I've just been kind of spending way too much money on knitting things lately, but so far I highly recommend these, especially if you are a tight knitter like me. I do have some yarn acquisitions as well. Um, I'll start also in the order which it was received, which actually is. Okay. So, I kind of have a problem with buying sock yarn. Um, I don't really randomly buy like DK weight yarn or worsted yarn or any other yarn for like garments. I, I wait until I know what I want to knit for a garment before I buy yarn for it because I want to be sure to have the yardages right so I'm not buying excess of anything. Um, 
That's not the case with sock yarn though, because I always know generally about how much yarn I'm going to need for socks, and it has just kind of turned into this whole problem, <laughs> I'll say. Um, so if you've been watching, you know I've been buying a lot of sock yarn these last six months or so, and I did buy a lot of very colorful sock yarn in kind of lighter colors too, but I need to be able to have a kind of a solid color to be able to go with these colorful socks because I really like the idea of like rainbow colors mixed with like earthy tones. It helps balance um, colorful with earth, which is like my style for sure. Um, so I didn't have a lot of earthy tones that were a good base for all of these colors. So I went on to Knit Picks and I just got some solid dark colored yarns and I'll go ahead and show you. So this one is Gloss, which is a fingering weight sock yarn from Knit Picks. And this is the color... <laughs> this is actually 70% merino wool and 30% silk, which is interesting. I don't even know if this is sock yarn. I think it is. I just am so used to sock yarn having nylon in it. I don't know if silk will be strong enough to kind of hold it all together. Let me know your thoughts on that. But I also got it in... Um, this so this is more of a jewel tone green and then I got this one in more of an earthy green this one is called rosemary so I have these two here and then I got another one in stroll so I have stroll tweed for the other sock yarn that I have but then I got just a plain stroll it's showing black but it's actually called Midnight Heather. It's like a very, very dark, kind of a blue-green. But it just looks black on screen. <laughs> Whatever. Um, okay, I got more sock yarn. So I saw that Naughty Pine Fiber Co. was having a drop, and I love all of the yarns she comes out with so I really wanted to be able to get some yarn from her so again I thought it was safe to get some more sock yarn and that's what I got <laughs> so this is the big horn sock it's 80% superwash merino 20% nylon and this is in the crisp amber ale colorway I'm so excited about this I definitely am going to make a pair of socks with this next um, after I finish this other pair and I'm going to quickly go grab what I plan to combine it with because it's going to be color work. So I'm going to combine it with this here which is Positive Ease hand dyed yarns and there's that and the socks I'm going to make is from S knits on Instagram and this is what they are I can't think of the name of the pattern right now um, but the moment I saw this pattern I became obsessed with it and I thought these would be nice fall colors to be able to make that with so very excited um, and then okay so when I went camping last weekend all I brought was the pair of socks that I was working on and I forgot the second skein, so I knew I wasn't going to be able to make a second pair when I was up there, and I panicked. So when I was up in Bayfield, Wisconsin, there's a pretty good-sized yarn shop up there, so I ended up buying more sock yarn in case I ran out. Um, never ended up running out because I didn't knit them fast enough, but I got this yarn here, which is called Kenzie. It's from New Zealand. Let's get up close. Yeah, you can see it. It's kind of like a pea green with little tweedy flecks in it. It actually kind of reminds me of the yarn that I got 
the Madeline Tosh Hedgehog Fibers collab. <laughs> so maybe I can wear these at the same time. I don't know. But yes, this is nylon, angora, alpaca, silk, and merino. So it's a blend of a lot of different things. Sounds very hearty. And the color is 10, I think. But yeah, it's distributed by Skasel, which I think I've heard of, but yeah. So it's just some sock yarn. Didn't end up needing it, but I definitely will end up using it for sure. I have a one final acquisition, and this one is from the Sweet Rochelle from Queen's Yarn Boutique, um, which is a really nice podcast also. She does knitting, but she also talks about crocheting a lot too, so if you're a crocheter, that's a good one to check out for sure. Um, but she also watches my videos and she has knit crate as well and she knew that I really wanted a red but had gotten the pastel pink instead uh, so she reached out to me and asked if I wanted her to send me the red and she I said yes and she did and it was really nice so I do have the bright red yarn from Knit Crate now and I'm really excited I know I'm going to make some type of tank top with it I don't know when I'll get around to it now that I'm like really into fall but it'll still be a good layering piece underneath things too um so who knows, maybe I'll have the urge to do another June top if I need another palette cleanser. We will see, but in the end, I'm very happy that I have this. And yeah, that's um, all the new yarn that I have. And yeah, I hope you're all having a good weekend. It's Labor Day weekend. I, um, I like actively decided not to do anything and it worked out because I ended up getting a big sinus infection so I would have been too sick to do anything anyways. I'm feeling better now but Mitch went up to his friend's cabin so I've had the house to myself and just doing a bunch of knitting and my friend is coming over later and yeah that's pretty much all I have planned. <laughs> Thanks for sticking around this long. I always appreciate all of my viewers. If you're new here, consider subscribing and that way you won't miss out on any future content. Um, but yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your weekend. Talk to you next time. Bye.